Amen. God bless you, pilgrims. We want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, we thank the Lord for his presence in the house of the Lord. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song. Amen. I'm only in this message by grace. Amen. It's only by grace that I'm in this place. Amen. It's by the grace of God that we're here. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm only in this message I pray. It is only my grace that I'm in this place. I don't know how.
something far beyond what they can imagine, Lord. Thank you so much, God, that we are heading towards that, Lord, and tonight, Father, we come again, Lord, for another portion of your word, Lord. Father, come, anoint your speaker, Father. Speak the articles of God, Father, and give us receptive hearts, Lord, to, Lord, just to receive that word this evening, Father. Lord, and let me have it, Lord God, and let me cherish it, Father, your word in our hearts, and let me take us with us, Lord God, as we go into the world once again, Father. Let me live the word out there, Lord, as you inspire us to do it, Lord. Father, be with each and every one tonight, Lord God. Open our hearts, give us a set of hearts, Lord. And Father, let your word fall and fill out our soul this evening, Lord God. We pray all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 You may be seated, saints. Hallelujah. The, de the deacons take the evening tasks and offerings. Amen. We've got Sister Eden. Amen. Sister Eden may come forward, followed by the same one. Amen. I got to thank the believers from Worcester. I'm going to sing for now. 
and mercy follow me pastures you make me lie down in green pastures you lead me beside the still waters and there you restore my life lonely and you set a table before me i will honor your name with my whole heart and stay on the righteous path even though i walk through the darkest valley i will not fear for you are always with me lonely how could I ever be lonely? For you set a table before me in the presence of my foes. Anoint me with the spirit of god you anoint me from the top of my head down to my feet my cup overflows with your love even though i walk through the darkest valley i will not fear for you are always with me always with me oh the lord is my shepherd i shall not want anything but you for all my days your goodness and mercy follow me and i will dwell in your house oh the lord is my shepherd I shall not want anything but you for all my days your goodness and mercy follow me and I will dwell in your house for Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the great shepherd. Amen. The shepherd of the shepherds. Amen. We thank God for his presence. Amen. God bless you, Eden.
for the right brother Seymour. Seymour. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints. The heavens do rule. Amen. Can I have key of brother? Amen. Oh, the depth of the knowledge and wisdom of the Lord. His judgments are unsearchable and his ways Past finding out who hath directed his spirit and whose counsel did he take? For by him and through him are all things on earth made. And we know that all things work together for our good the footsteps of the righteous they are all dead by the lord even though things don't work out just the way we think they should yet we know in all things that the heavens surely rule. Which of us, by taking thought, could add to ourselves? Why do we yet so many times resist His will? We've got to realize salvation is holy of the Lord just stand still and consider all the wondrous works of God and we know that all things work together for our good the footsteps of the righteous, they are all dead by the Lord, even though things don't work out just the way we think they should. Yet we know in all things that the heavens surely rule. There is nothing that happens without a real intent. Our experiences were ordained and our trials have been sent that we might manifest the purpose unto which we have been called. So in perfect confidence, we can submit to Him our oh, oh, And we know that all things work together for our good. The footsteps of the righteous, they are all dead by the Lord. Even though things don't work out just the way we think they should, yet we know in all things that the heavens surely rule. Oh, and we know that all things work together. For our good, the footsteps of the righteous, they are all dead by the Lord, 
even though things don't work out just the way we think they should yet we know in all things that the heaven surely rule amen hallelujah amen you know all things work together for good amen to them that love god that are called with the purpose tonight we are those people let us all stand saints and Maybe Brother Peter will ask the believers from Worcester to sing before he preaches, but no, they don't have to. Um, let's sing that song. Align me with my theophany. Is that your desire tonight? I want to be synchronized with my theophany, amen. Align me with my theophany.
we are so thankful once again tonight. Lord, we can come to your presence with songs of worship, songs of praise, songs of adoration, Lord. Oh God, and songs of revelation of the hour. Dear God, when this mortal shall put on immortality. And dear God, that we, the book has been opened, Lord. And Father God, as we, Lord, heard from heaven, that, oh God, that there was a part of us that always was, even before there was a star, a molecule, or an atom. But dear God, waiting for the hour of expression, and, O oh God, as your servant, the prophet, O oh Lord, told us, O oh God, that when he recognized this to be evil fool, we've left the things that we were at, Lord, and we've turned, O oh God, to the message of the hour we have heard from our theophany. Truly, we have heard from our theophany, Lord. There's a body waiting, Lord, as your servant Paul said, when this earthly tabernacle of our habitation be dissolved, we have one already waiting. Lord, we, oh God, move our dwelling places, Lord, from a mortal being, oh God, to an immortal body, Father. Body, Lord, not made with hands. This is a pest house, Lord, but we go to the Father's house. A body that knows no sickness, no time, no age, no sorrow, Lord, but a perfect body, Lord. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. And tonight we come, we sing songs of adoration, we sing songs, Lord. Hallelujah. In the revelation of our faith tonight. We love you. We bless your wonderful name. Thou the only true and living God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we welcome your presence in our midst tonight. We realize when you are here, when Jesus is here, all things are possible. Sick can be healed, O oh God, the backslider restored. The sinner saved tonight can receive a fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost tonight. To be touched afresh by your mighty power. You are the unchanging God tonight. We love you, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your wonderful name. There is none like you, Lord. There is none beside thee. Save one, Lord, and let the children of Israel through the wilderness, Lord, in the pillar of fire, came flesh, O God, in the virgin born body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord, after, and Paul met him on the road to Damascus. And after 2,000 years, Lord, that same pillar of fire has returned again, Lord. Father God, to interpret the word, to bring out, to reveal the mysteries of God, hidden from the foundation of the world love you we thank you father for this great hour we are living in truly we can say tonight there's never been a day like this day it's never been a light that shone so bright as this glorious light of the hour blessed be the name lord we worship and adore you we honor you we glorify you tonight we thank you dear god for your goodness upon us in jesus christ's name amen and amen Amen. I want to greet each and every one. Welcome each and every one in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is indeed the privilege once again to be in the house of the Lord. And tonight we want to welcome the believers from Worcester. Amen. May God bless them. Be with them this tonight. May they be blessed. Amen. As they come to the house of the Lord. And also tonight we have a request. Please pray for Angie as she is very sick for our Lord to please undertake as he always does. Thank you. God bless. And in our services for the week ahead, on Tuesday night, we have our, coach, our local Tuesday night meeting in the Tabernacle. And in the adult service on Thursday evening will be a virtual meeting. And in Mitchell's Plain, it, the meeting will be at the home of our brother Henry Wilson. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Close our eyes. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful tonight. Lord, that we can enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your court with praise tonight, for you are the only true and living God. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, he who was, which is, and shall come, the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And as we come to thee tonight, Lord, we bring this request, O God, of Angie, Father, who is very sick, Lord. And Father, as the church of the living God, the blood-washed Lord, the purchase of the blood, we come into your presence tonight. 
Lord, we unite in prayer, we unite in faith tonight. The doctors might have diagnosed, O oh God, the doctors might have given a diagnosis, O oh Lord, and, O oh Lord, whatever the doctors can do, Lord, but that is as far as they can go. But, Lord, your prophet said, O oh God, you said in your word, I am the Lord that heals all thy diseases. And therefore, we bring Angie before you tonight. May she at this very moment, Lord, as this church of the living God calls upon you, feel the change, O oh God, for the better. May the great Holy Ghost come and touch her, Lord, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. We believe that you are still the miracle-working God. You are the unchanging God tonight. You are still the healer, Lord. Your prophet said, O oh God, that this body, you designed the body, therefore the body must obey your word. And by the stripes of Jesus Christ, may she be healed tonight for God's glory in Jesus Christ's name. And Father, as we gather together tonight, Lord, we come with great expectation as we heard this morning, Lord, to once again receive a blessing from your hand. May you bless our precious pastor, Peter Peterson, Lord, as you would come and minister your word. And Father, as we come and draw from the gift of God, may you bless us tonight as we linger in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we sing an introductory song tonight. Have your way, have your way, as we welcome our Pastor Peter Peterson tonight to come and minister the Word of God. Amen. Have your way. Have your way. to the Lord, your author of the Bible, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, it's a great privilege for us, Lord Jesus, to gather around the bodywork of the Son of Man. Lord, thank you for a life-giving message. Lord, thank you, a word that comes from the unseen realm. Lord, this is not a word, Lord Jesus, from a Bible school or a seminary, but this word comes straight from the unseen, comes straight from you. Lord, it's a promised word, Lord Jesus. Lord, you promise in your Bible that in Revelation 10 you will raise up and seven messenger. Lord, in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, all the mysteries will be revealed. And we enjoy the mysteries. Lord, each and every mystery. Lord, the Bible has become a new book. 
Lord, you shine your light on that word and you reveal it to us. And Lord, we are a happy race, a super race and a happy race. Oh Lord, that we can have this fellowship with you and can have this revelation, Lord Jesus. This word, Lord Jesus, is here that, can, that, that is able to take us right into heaven. And Lord, we praise you tonight and we give you all the glory. Be with us. Lord, as your prophet said, there's always something special about the evening time. It's an evening time message. It's evening time by us. Come and speak. You know the need of each and every one that is here. Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Unlock and open, Lord Jesus, and let your word flow. Let your word flow. And Lord, come and encourage us where we need to be encouraged. Lord, where we need to be stabilized in the word. You come and do it because no man can do it. Only you can give us revelation and you can stabilize us in present day truth. Be with us tonight and especially for me. Be with me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Amen. It's good for me to be here tonight. I want to thank Brother Errol, amen, calling me up. And I also want to thank Pastor Beckett for the invitation to be here. It's always good to be here in Bible Tabernacle. This is the church where I grow up as a young boy. I grow up under this ministry. I grow up under this leadership. Amen. And this is a good leadership. It's a good word that you have here. Amen. And God has blessed your church with a wonderful man. He had become like a father for me. He married me two times. I said, Brother Beckett married me two times. He married me when I married Madeleine of Felizdo. The mother of the children at this year. And the second time he married me with the assembly there in Worcester. Amen. And that's why I became the pastor. So I was married two times. Yeah. Amen. And, and this is the man that I look up, Brother Beckett. I, you know, I really loved him. And Sister Ernestine. I know them for all these years. And uh, it's been a long time since I was here. The last time I was here, the curtains was always Brother Beckett believe in blue. But I see it's gold now. These days like the, 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 the carpet. But things have changed, and so does our change. Change is good. Sometimes it's good. Amen. Are you happy for the Lord, brothers and sisters? Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. I think this is our business. That's why we are here. Amen. We can go to our Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 18. We can stand as we, while we read the word. Amen. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 10. I'm busy teaching now at my church there on the hearing form of your hearing form your theophany. And I'm just con going to continue with that. Sorry that I have to continue with what I'm busy with. Good to see you, Brother Danny. Amen. Amen. The Bible said here in Matthew chapter 18, verses 10, the Bible reads, <clears throat> Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, this is very important, that in heaven their angels, angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, do we not leave the nineteen and nine and go it into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? Verse 13, and if so, be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the nineteen and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, this is your word. We bring your word before you. Oh, Father, come and Lord, come and bless it. Lord, like they said in Afrikaans, that's a betrouwbare word. And that is werk om ten volle aangeneem te word. Lord, come and take preeminence now and come and do the preaching for us as we place ourselves, Lord Jesus, in your capable hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Amen. <coughs> now, like I said, it's good to be here. A little bit nervous to be here because, you know, he is a great person. There is always something that we say about the people in the Cape. Cape people. 
Now, ik sta vanavond voor Kaapse mensen. I'm standing before Capetonians tonight. Amen. But I'm so glad to see my brothers and sisters from the other countries that is also present here. Now, brothers and sisters, our scripture reading comes out of the book of Matthew. If you read the King James, you will see that portion of scriptures is in red because this is the words of Jesus. He himself was, 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 was preaching and telling, about, telling us about, you know, angels, you know, that is before the face of the Father. Amen. And it wasn't Paul. It wasn't, it wasn't Paul. It was not Peter teaching this, but it was Christ himself. Amen. It was Christ himself. Amen. Who bring this word to us. Amen. And we find the book of Matthew show us the very important thing. He saw us, there's angel, there's, there's angels, do always behold my father's face. Amen? So there's angels in heaven. Hey, good to see Wooster tonight, yeah? Can we give Wooster a hand? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Yanni. Amen. But Johannes. Amen. Like I said, our scripture reading is not, it's not Paul. It's not Peter who's teaching here this. It is Jesus himself who's actually telling us about, you know, there is uh, uh, angels that is beholding the face of the Father. Amen? Now, as we all know by now, brothers and sisters, there's a, there's a promise of a message. This message was promised to us. Amen? By, the, by, by God himself. The Bible said, amen, there will be a word at the end time. Amen? amen? That will restore us. That will bring us in line for the rapture. Am I right? Amen. Amen. So all we know, brothers and sisters, by now, there's a promise of a message. Amen. And as a message to, to wake the bride. Amen. You were laying dormant there, but the word comes to you that has waken you up. Amen. You were asleep, but now you're not asleep anymore. It's a promised word, amen, that have quickened us, as Brother Branham explained. Amen. Is it, it's an awakening. It's a quickening. The message of the hour is a resurrection ministry. Am I right? It's a resurrection ministry. It has waken us up. Amen. Now we are not asleep anymore. But we see now face to face. Amen. This message has been promised. The seven thunders has been promised. Amen. The seven seal has been promised. And the resurrection seal has been promised to us. And we have it in our day and our time. Am I right? Amen. So we find, brothers and sisters, through all the ages we see in every age, it was the Holy Spirit speaking. Two prophets in the, in the, in the messengers, amen, that God raised up. One Paul, the, the prophet, Brother Branham at the end, the prophet, the others was all messengers. Amen. But we find, brothers and sisters, through all the ages, amen, in every age, it was the Holy Spirit speaking through a man. Amen. The Holy Spirit through a man. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I do believe it wasn't Brother Branham speaking. It was the Holy Spirit revealing the sevenfold mystery to the man. Amen. God used only his vocals, but it was God revealing the sevenfold mystery plan. Amen. In our day and our time, we had learned, brothers and sisters, that it was more than just a man. It was the manifestation of God. The seven spirits, the seven messengers, the book of Revelation speak of seven stars. Amen? In the right hand of the Lord Jesus. Amen? It was that messengers that God sent and we are so thankful that God has sent us the seven one. And the seven was, was a prophet. Amen? And he revealed all the mysteries. Job well done. Can we give Brother Brandon a hand? Hallelujah. Job well done. A completion. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet so us. Amen. These little ones on earth have their angels in heaven. That's why, brothers and sisters, your greatest possession is in heaven. Do you hear me? I said your greatest possession is in heaven. Amen. Your treasures is in heaven. Not on earth. In heaven. Hallelujah. On earth we are trapped. We have a mortal, a mortal house. Amen. We have a body of 16 elements. Amen. That will perish. This mortal body, amen, will perish. 
the 16 elements will go back, amen, to the dust where it joins us. Amen, of the earth, but we have one that cannot perish. We have one that cannot perish, which is in heaven. It's only a dimension away. But the banner said, heaven is not beyond the milky line. Heaven is only a dimension away. One day I'm going to take a step. A step into my new body. Amen. So it's a dimension away, brothers and sisters, that body that will not perish, which is in heaven. The Bible said the world will not see me, but you will see me. The world will not see me, but you will see me. And what it is the boss speaking here. It is Jesus himself speaking. The world will not see me, but you will see me. Amen. That's why people struggle to see the face in the cloud. Can somebody put the cloud on? Amen. They struggle to see the face. Amen. But brothers and sisters, the world will not see me, but you will see me. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's declaring and he's revealing to you that he is here. Amen. Don't know if you sing that song here. He is here right now. We sing it in Busta. Amen. He is here. Amen. Can you see the nose? Can you see the eyes? Can you see the beard? The world will not see me. But you will see me. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Branham standing at Jefferson Pupil and said, What is the attraction on the mountain? He said, Can you see his face? Hallelujah. We are so thankful for what we have received in this day and our time. Am I right, brothers and sisters? He is declaring and is revealing to you that he is here. Amen. He is here and he is here right now. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 That's why he's revealing, brothers and sisters, a greater than Solomon is here. He's revealing to us there's a man that can turn on the light. He's revealed to us, brothers and sisters, that Christ, the mystery, amen, is revealed. Amen. He revealed to us, brothers and sisters, a mighty God unveiled right before us. Right before us. Amen. It's been revealed to us. And we have received it in this day. And we're not going to question that. Amen. Sorry for that time that will question it. Today we have seen his glory in plain view. By the message of the hour, we see him in plain view. Amen. His motive and objective is all been made known to us. There's no secrets anymore between us and God. Amen. There's no secret. Everything is being revealed. Amen. Garden of Eden, Calvary, redemption. Amen. Even Brother Branham came and he don't take you to the beginning as Moses. He take you to before the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Where God was the one who exists in himself. Amen. The Elohim. Now we see the third fold mystery in the back part of God's mind, brothers and sisters. And we see his purpose. And we see why, um, why brothers and sisters, we are on the earth. And why we are here. Amen. We didn't understand that when we was in the church world. But now we understand. We understand everything. Everything is being made known to us. Amen. We see why God created the heavens and the earth. Why he came, amen, with an open book in this day. Amen. The unwritten word. Reveal the written word. Amen. This is what we have received. Amen. In a day and a time. Now listen, when he came the first time, amen, he redeemed his elect. There was an Eliza to introduce him the first time. And in this day, the second time, again, there is an Elijah, amen, to introduce him again. So God worked on that same principle. It was a John at the beginning, and once again we are introduced. Amen, that spirit of Eliza. God loved that spirit of Eliza. That's why God used it five times. Five times. Still have to use it again. Are you up with that, brothers and sisters? Amen. He will still use that spirit. God really loved that spirit. 
that's in Eliza to introduce him again. And his presence always is unrecognized. Even the presence of Jesus was unrecognized while he was walking the streets, while he was breaking the bread. Amen. While he was walking on water, amen, and do all the miracles, amen, his presence always is unrecognized. John the Baptist saw a light came down to a human body, and even Paul saw that light, amen, on the road of Damascus. The world will not see him, but you will see him. He come to you. God is here for you. Say, so God have no business with the Pentecostals. God have no business with the Protestant and the Nazarene. God got only business with you. The reason why he carried that cross, it was for you. For nobody else. He died, hallelujah, for you. And when, he, when you meet him, amen, there will be a change. There's always a change when you meet Christ. Am I right? Amen. A change must take place. The Son of Man has come back to seek and save that which is lost. Now the Bible, brothers and sisters, in a scripture reading, amen, said these little ones on earth have their angels in heaven and have their Father in heaven. He came down as the Son of Man to bring back His children to Himself, to seek for them because they have representation in heaven. He says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 12, How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and goes astray, he leaves the ninety-nine and goes into the mountains to seek that which is lost? God is looking for something that belongs to him. God is looking for something that belongs to him. Amen. He wants to redeem back what belongs to him. Amen. He wants to hold it. He wants to have fellowship with it. It's part of him. And church, you are part of him. Hallelujah. You will not stop. Hallelujah. Amen. God needs, but the Benham even said, to you, God needs your fellowship. God, the eternal one. The Creator needs your fellowship. He wants to have fellowship with you. He longs fellowship. That's why God is always glad when you go on your knees. God is happy when you put on your church coat. Amen. When you have, hallelujah, a, a, a convention or you have that fellowship with Him, you make God happy by doing that. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we find God in the Garden of Eden. Amen. When he created Adam and Eve, but the Bible said he changed now, he became Jehovah. Amen. He became a family man. Because Jehovah now is God with his children. Adam and Eve. Amen. We find he created them, but Adam and Eve hiding. Amen. And they were running away from his presence. And God was looking for them. God was looking for them. He said, Adam... Adam, where are thou? Amen. He could have lost them, but now they were part of him. They were part of him. And that shows us that God also can put on his nikes and run after his children. Amen. He ran after Adam and Eve. Amen. Adam, where are thou? Amen. He is running after them. He did not do that when the angels fell, but he did that when Adam fell. Running after them. But God wants to say something to a young man here. I want you to say this is straight from God. The word Eden, it means, in Greek, it means the presence of God. So you that planning to get married, I don't know who you are or who listen to my voice. I want you to know, before Adam, before God gave Adam a wife, He first gave him His presence. Adam, Eden means God's presence. So you that want a wife, you first must get the presence of God first. Hallelujah. And after he gave Adam his presence, he gave Adam a job. Why are you so quiet? Why are you so quiet? He gave Adam a job. 
Brother, you must get yourself a job. Amen. He gave Adam a job. He first gave him his presence, Eden, then a job. And then he said to Adam, you must cultivate the earth. So what God has given you, you must cultivate it. You must make more of it. You must make it beautiful. You must make it lost. Amen. You must cultivate it. This was the instruction from God to Adam. Am I right, church? Hallelujah. And after that, brothers and sisters, then he gave him, amen, Eve. And he did not teach Eve. It was Adam's job to tell Eve, amen, everything. All the sermons that God preached to Adam, it was Adam to preach it back now. What is the instruction here? You know, every evening he will come to us. He will preach to us. Amen. The last time he preached, he said, we, must not, we are not allowed to eat from the tree. Amen. In the middle. And that was not the teachings from God. Amen. To Eve straight. It was from Adam. So brother, stop that nonsense of you waiting for the pastor to teach your husband, your wife. It is your job. It is your job. Brother, to teach your wife. Amen. Now I want the pastor to come. Now you must make do Bible study. Because it's your responsibility. Because we take you to the Bible. This is what the Bible said. Amen. And you must work and you must protect the garden. That was not part of my notes. It just come up on my mind. But this is a brother maybe planning to get. You must get a job first. But before the job. Before the job, you must first get the presence of God. Eden, what is it meaning? It means the presence of God. You must first get in the presence of God. Am I right, church? Amen. He was not running after the angels when they fall, but when Adam and Eve fell. Amen. He was running after them. We find Jonah was also running. Amen. He was hiding and he was praying. And after the praying, what happened? The resurrection comes. The resurrection. God was determined to restore men. Amen. God was lonely. God came to make peace with men. Amen. He came to, down to tear down the middle wall of petition. Amen. He tore down the middle wall of petition so, because he want fellowship. Amen. That was important for him. And when he finds that one, the Bible said he rejoices more over the one than the 99. Amen. That last one holds the mystery of completion. The last one holds the mystery to completion. But that last one holds the secret, as Brother Badham said. Always the last one. We are the last there's no church it's by the Ati after this one. Yeah. Amen. No eight angel will follow, Brother Brenham. Sorry for your eight angels, your nine angels. There's no scripture for you. There's no place for you. Amen. He rejoices over the one. Amen. Hello, the last one holds the mystery of completion. That last one holds the secret. And as Brother Brandon explained, he said the seven angels on Sunset Mountain holds the mystery, amen, of Calvary. Am I right? Holds the mystery of Calvary. Amen. He said, all that the Father has given me, none will be lost. What a promise. None will be lost. You can try to backslide, God will restore you back. Amen. None will be lost. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they have representation in heaven. You've got an angel that represents you in heaven. Hallelujah. That's why we find, brothers and sisters, there are seven messengers, seven groups of overcomers in glory, and anyone who has his name on the book, God will be searching. God will be calling that one by name. You are called by name. That's why you are here. Just look to you. 
the only one in your family. But you say amen on tape services. You read books, spoken with books that even don't have even pictures in it. But you love it. Am I right? You like it, hallelujah. Amen. And that's why it's because, brothers and sisters, God has called you by name. Through a mystery revealing his name. In my scripture reading in Matthew, brothers and sisters, he's teaching about shepherd and sheep. Amen. He speak about the shepherd, shepherd's persistence. He's busy with the group, but he sees one is lost. And God becomes persistent, amen, to go after the last one. Can you see the persistence there, brothers and sisters? The value he placed on that sheep. That value that he placed on that one that's lost. Amen? He go after him. Leave the 99. That's why Brother Brennan teaches, he said, Redemption is shepherd and sheep. He said the sheep is lost and not the shepherd. God put that kind of, of value on us. Amen? That kind of value is upon me and you. Amen? Hallelujah. You mean more to him than his own life. He gave up his life. For who? Not for the world. But for you. He got himself in the, in the dressing womb of that Virgin Mary. Give birth to himself. But the Bible said he enmorphed himself. Become a blood cell for you. Because, brothers and sisters, you want to restore. Amen. Hallelujah. You mean more to God than his own blood. Than his own blood. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, so it will be. Amen. So it will be of your Father in heaven that not one of these elected ones should perish. I do believe, brothers and sisters, the sky is full that we are at the end. Can you see it? Can you see it in the global world? Hallelujah. The world, brother Benham said before he left the scene, he said the world is falling apart. Explain to us, hallelujah, false anointed ones at the end time. That was pre-1965. Just look around on your YouTube. False anointed ones, amen, at the end time. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, oh, that spirit also have flow into the community of the message. Yes. Yes. It's present. Hallelujah. Amen. Just look around in all the African states and even in Europe, all over. It have come in the message community. But I've got news for you. Although it is here, there still will be a bride. There still will be a bride. Amen. Fanatism can come in, but still will there be a bride. Amen. Without spot or wrinkle. Fanatism will come and fanatism will go. People will come and people will go. Doctrines will come and doctrines will go. Ideas of people will come and they will go. Amen. False anointed ones will come. Hallelujah. But still there will be a bride without spot or wrinkle. Am I right, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. He says, so it is the will of your Father in heaven that not one of his elected ones should perish. In other words, brothers and sisters, he'll find every one of them. No matter where you are. No matter who you are, no matter on what island you are, God will find you. This message will find you. Amen? And this message of the hour needs no protection. The message of the hour is like a lion. It protects itself. We don't need a group of men, a family to protect it. No man can protect this message. This message will, hallelujah. When Brother Brenham lived the last time, he told Billy, he said, this message will go down deep in the jungles of Africa. Hallelujah. 
I see my Africa brothers here. Amen. Lots of Africa brothers, but I want you to know we are South Africans. We are so fortunate. We've got the book. A prophet visit South Africa. You don't have a book like that. <laughs> We've got the book. A prophet visit South Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you give the South Africans a hand of applause? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Luckily for you, Father from Zimbabwe, when he was here in Durban, a man that birthday of one Bali Paul, he said, okay, they want me for two days in Zimbabwe. And he fly out for two days. But there was no book. <laughs> a prophet visited South Africa. Hallelujah. Church, he will find you. Wherever you are. You can run, but you can hide. All the Father has given me will come, not one will perish. To lose one of these little ones whose angels behold my Father's face in heaven mean losing part of himself. Am I right? It means he is losing a name in the lamb section of the book of life. And that is impossible for God to lose you. It's impossible for God to lose you. Amen. You will come. Even if you are raised up like a, 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 a Muslim or a Jew, you will come. Amen. You will respond to the word. Hallelujah. No matter what the color of your skin is, you will come. Hallelujah. It means hallelujah. Amen. Losing himself and God will never lose you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14, up until 18, the Bible reads, Amen, if you can put it up there for us, brother, Amen. Amen. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, remained the same veil, Amen, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So you have to see there's a curtain. Amen, there's a curtain between 14 and 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open faces, hallelujah, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord and change into the same image from glory to glory, even hallelujah, as by the Spirit of the Lord. We all, me and you, human beings, are designed in such a way that all that you are is reflected in your face. All that you are is reflected in your face. Your face is the thing that identifies you. Amen? On your ID, they don't put the whole body there. It's only your face. Hallelujah. On your passport, it's only your face. They don't put your hands there. They don't put your knees there, your shoulders there, but your face. Sunset Mountain reveals what? A face. Can I get my cloud pizza again, my brother? Amen. Hallelujah. It reveals a face. Hallelujah. Where's the body? Here's the body. Here's the body. That's the head. Amen. 1963, 28 of February. The head connected with the body. A marriage took place. And who was the marriage officer? That man that was born on the hills of Kentucky. Left school at grade 5. His father was a drunkard. He was the marriage officer. William Brennan. Am I right, church? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sunset Mountain reveals a face. 
God designed you so because that's a mystery in His Word. Amen. We are beholding the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. Amen. We will not see through obscure glass, but clear glass, face to face. The Bible is saying our angels are beholding the Father's face. If you forget me, just hold on this thing. You've got representation in heaven. And it don't even come from Jeffersonville or from Arizona pulpit. It comes from God. That's why I show you at the beginning, it was not even a teaching of Paul or Peter. It was the boss himself. God himself. You've got representation in heaven. Hallelujah. But their minds were blinded. Hallelujah. For until this day remained the same veil. Untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ. Paul says their minds were blinded. So you can see brothers and sisters. You first was an eternal gene. As Brother Brandon explained on the original seed. Amen. Then your eternal body comes. You bypass most of your healthy body. Then you were placed in this sex born body that you are in now. Hallelujah. The reason you can't see the glory, that glory of God, is because of this body. This body is a hindrance. Hallelujah. The reason why you can't see it is because of this body. Amen. So you have to see it by revelation. And we thank God for revelation. You can only understand God by revelation. You can only see God by revelation. Not by knowledge. Hallelujah. Only by revelation. That's why God hand out revelation. Hallelujah. A man might have 20 out of 20 vision. Excellent eyesight. But yet he cannot see God. Amen. His inner man, his inner eyes is closed. Our body is a house, a curtain. We are trapped in time. Flesh and blood can't enter there. Cannot understand. Hallelujah. Amen. But we thank God for that eye. That spiritual eye. Look to the New Testament. Two men on the road. Amen. Two men on the road of Emirs. They were with Jesus. Walking with that man, fellowshipping with that man. But they were blind. Hallelujah. Their eyes were closed. Gehasi. But it tear gemaakt for Elia. Oh, amen. He was with the man of God. For how long? For many, many years. His eyes were closed. Yet he could not see. Amen. With his spiritual eye. He could see with his natural eye. But he could not see. That's why brothers and sisters. You will find people in the message. Carrying spoken with books. Carrying tapes. Brother Brennan. Brother Brennan. But they can't see. They can't see. Hallelujah. Amen. People can have a better eyesight. Than you. And can still remain blind. Do you know some? Don't mention names. Amen? We say how this body, brothers and sisters, is a hindrance. Amen? It came by natural birth. It came by sexual desire. But a theophany never come that way. It never came that way. Your theophany is that gene of God. That inner man. Hallelujah. It never came that way. Your perversion in your life is your body. It's your body. Amen? The one that you are spending so much time with, the one that you want to project to people that you are nice, under all those nice church clothes, work clothes, uniform, brothers and sisters, amen, you can deceive, and you can betray, and you carry the huge jealousy under that clothes. Your body is your hindrance. Hallelujah. But thank God for our theophany body. Yearing from your theophany. But when you start to get taken up with the man on the inside, 
the man whose father is in heaven and his angels always behold the father's face and that connection between the soul and the theophany comes, then he starts to hear from his theophany. Because your body is brought into subjection now, then you have a wireless connection. And we thank God for this wireless connection that we have. We are connected with the unseen realm. Amen. We've got an antenna. Hallelujah. That's connected. That's why you say amen. Hallelujah. Because of that wireless connection. Are you glad for God for that wireless connection? Not everybody have that Wi-Fi. Not everybody can be in that amen area where you can pick up those signals. No. Amen. Then when you have that wireless connection, then you start to see heaven is not the place your mama and papa told you about. Amen. Then you see something more. You see a higher form of this life. Said you find you see a higher form of this life. Amen. Amen. And you will never desire to be back in this life again. Amen. When Brother Brandon was beyond the curtain of time, he said, I don't want to come back. Amen. But he was not finished with his job, but his desire it was not to come back. Amen. He's like a pig, amen, becoming a human. Don't get taken up, hallelujah, church of Cape Town. Don't get taken up by the shadow while the real is waiting for you. The real is here. We are running a race. Amen. Not for a natural piece of gold medal, but for an incorruptible price. So run the race. Keep on running. Run, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on running. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we find brothers and sisters. But the Benham said, Hallelujah. And when he explained for us, Amen, about shepherd and sheep, he said he was greater. He was a greater man. He was greater than all those in the Bible. You can't compare Jesus with anyone in the Old Testament. Amen. Yeah, in the scripture, we find they show us, amen, of Moses. When they read of Moses, amen, amen, Moses, amen, you can't even connect Moses with Christ. He play out a role, amen. There were certain things that you can identify with him, but yet, brothers and sisters, when you read it, Christ is the majestic one. He's greater than all the prophets of old. Amen? But yet, when you read of Abram, he was Abram. When you read about Jonah, he was Jonah. When you read about David, he was David. Amen? All that was in all those men were reflected in his, in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Christ revealing the promised Messiah. When Christ came, he removed the veil, then you saw a greater than Abram is here. A greater than Solomon is here. A greater than David is here. A greater than Jonah is here. He was a greater shepherd than Abel. He said Abel was so great, a greater shepherd was on the scene. Amen. A greater shepherd was born in the book of Matthew. Amen. Abel put down his lamb. Amen. But Jesus, he put down his life. Amen. Abel gave a lamb. He didn't give himself. But Jesus... He gave himself. That's the beauty of a shepherd. To give your own life. And not a shepherd. He was both lamb and shepherd. Jesus. Both lamb and shepherd. Abel's blood was animal's blood. Jesus' blood was of a new creation. Amen. Enoch. He came to escape death. But Jesus came to conquer death. Amen. He was greater than Eliza who killed a bullock. Jesus, he laid down his own life. Amen. 
That's why church, brothers and sisters, David, he was a shepherd before he killed Goliath. Then he became king. So David was shepherd and king. Amen? Jesus was king of kings. Lord of lords. King of kings. A greater than David is here. Hallelujah. David was shepherd and king, but he was king of kings. He was God's prophet, the great shepherd. Noah, how beautiful he was. He ended up drunk. Am I right, church? Don't get quiet on me now, Noah. He ended up drunk. Amen. David ended up committed adultery. Moses ended up glorifying himself before the people. But Jesus, he was the matchless Christ. The Christ beyond compare. He didn't end with any mistake. Amen. He was the matchless Christ. That's why we thank God tonight. Hallelujah for his, last, for his life. That's why I do believe, brothers and sisters, my message to you tonight is the last day people will be, a, will be the bride in the bright age. She's going to be revealed something. She's not going to reveal a part. I said, this must be Jesus. She's not going to reveal a part. She's going to reveal him. That's end time lady. Hallelujah. That's end time woman. That's married woman. Not going to reveal the path. But she's going to reveal him. Not the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Not a fellowship. Not an organization. But this lady. This end time wife. She's going to reveal him. The entire Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ in his eternity. The complete revelation will come through him. Amen. Seven ages died and none was promised. You are promised the spoken word, which is the original seed. Amen. amen. We behold him, amen, to seven church ages from his feet. Amen. At the end, hallelujah, the headstone, the intelligence have come down. He stored his face. Amen. He is in full glory before us. Never before did God display himself like this. Never. You are fortunate to be in this day. Amen. I do believe when we as the end time bride is going to enter into that wall of glory, all the other church age members, they will raise when we walk in there and clapping for us. Hallelujah. Because this is a very difficult age. The Sodomite spirit is let loose here. Amen. You can't even trust the fivefold ministry anymore. Am I right, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. You can't trust books anymore. Hallelujah. You can't even trust men that have walked with Brother Brandon while he was alive. What they bring out now, yeah. It's my church, it's book. It's not Brother Brandon's book. Oh my, you can't trust nobody. Hallelujah. You've got to hear from your theophany. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why church, hallelujah, you have to see the last day people will be, the, will be in the bright age. Amen. She's going to reveal not a part, but she's going to reveal, amen, him. You are here. To reveal God to your colleague at your work. Amen. Amen. To your household. Amen. That's why, brothers and the first church age produced the word in part. You know the story of Paul. Paul could not reveal everything. He used a word, I reveal in part. But he also said that one day, when he will come. What day is he speaking of? Of this messenger. Of this message. Amen. That's why church. You are now. You have become the super race. A super church. 
the seals are taken off, amen, then the mystery is finished. Jesus tonight in bright form. Hallelujah. Just take a look. Look to your neighbor next to you. This is what you see in Jesus in bright form. Bright coming of Christ. Now we see everything in plain view. Am I right, brothers and sisters? With open faces, now we can see what the Theophany has been beholding. The mighty God has been unveiled before us. You and your Theophany will become one. One of these days will become one. It will pick you up and bring you into your glorification. That's why we know there's a promise of a meeting in the air. Hallelujah. In the sweet by and by. Amen. There will be a meeting. Do you believe in a meeting, brothers and sisters? It's what Brother Brenham said and even what Paul said. Paul speak of a rapture. He speak of a meeting. And Brother Brenham said, I preach exactly what Paul preached. Amen. I stand what Paul preached. Amen. That's why, amen, you and your theophany will become one. It will pick you up and bring you into your glorification. That's why we are going from glory to glory. From seed into glorified image. We are moving to there. Amen. Like a seed. All the potential, like I said to my church this morning, explaining to them, amen, like a seed. All the potential and the beauty is in that seed. If you have a seed, the beauty is in the seed, but you can't see it. Amen. Amen. But the law, there's a law. What did the Lord say? The Lord said, put it in the earth. You have to put this seed in the earth. That's a law. If you want to see the beauty, put it in the seed, in the earth. Amen. Then instead, if you put it in the earth, then it starts putting forth stalk. It put then, then leaves. Then you will see the colors. You will see the shades. Amen. And then you behold the beauty of that seed. Amen. All you are seeing, it changes. It changes from a stalk. It comes up. It comes up. Hallelujah. It starts to blossom. And you say, it's beautiful. Amen. Then it opens up fully. All that mystery that was in the seed. Hallelujah. That was locked up in that seed is opening up. We are so glad for this age. We are so glad for what was promised. We can see him in plain view now. Hallelujah. It's get more glorious. This message of the hour preached by Brother Branham get more glorious day by day. We see the gene of God is that seed. It will produce sons. And daughters, amen, of God. Nothing else. Only sons and daughters of God. The children of the kingdom. These little ones on earth, in heaven, their angels always behold the Father's face. Always. We are now beholding what our theophany was beholding. We have heard from our theophany. We're thinking like time creatures while we are here on earth. We are temporal. We get tired. We are hungry. We are asleep. Get sleep. Amen. But they are theophany. Are theophanies. They have no yesterday or tomorrow. They have no night and day. They have no sin. Amen. There's no sickness. They are in eternity. They represent us there. That could not reflect. Amen. Down here. Amen. But we've got a theophany that is waiting for you. Hallelujah. Even so, it is not the will of the Father that one of these should perish. Brothers and sisters, this is the love of God of you. Amen. This is the record of eternal life. You are in the section where you can't perish. Amen. Because you are eternal as God is eternal. They are part of him. They become the city. He is the headstone of that city. Brother Benham said, the lamb is the city and the light. Before our new birth, we had, veil, we had veiled faces. We could see the kingdom of God. But thank God for his visitation. Thank God for his visitation to each and every one. And thank God for the faith that is inside of you. Amen. 
Our son bought us t-shirts where it stands, amen, fear over faith. Amen. Faith is much, faith beyond fear, something like that. Faith is much more greater than fear. But you have to know that fear, hallelujah, is also strong. Am I right? We all deal with that day by day. Amen. In this body, you will deal with faith. But faith also has a lesson to learn. But the banner said, we came to this dimension where we run away from things. We run, you run away from a lion, you run away from a bear, you run away from a dog. Amen. Like I said to the church this morning, people oh, even run away from cockroaches. I don't know if you run away from cockroaches, but in Booster they run away, amen, from a cockroach. If there's a cockroach or a, a rat in the, in the room, they will not enter that room. They will not come there, amen. Even a cockroach, one woman broke a food running away from a cockroach. You hurt yourself by that. What is that? That's fear. That's fear. Let you run away from a cockroach. We run away from a rat. People will jump on a table being scared of a rat. And if you realize, church, that if, you, if, if fear can make you do that, what about faith? What about faith? If fear can let you lose your leg, hit yourself, amen, to the cupboard. Fear. What about faith? People will jump over a wall because of fear. But what about faith? Amen. That's why, brothers and sisters, we must know who we are. I'm so glad that Brother Branham said, if this bride will find out who she is, it's all over. It's all over. Amen. We see, brothers and sisters, in a day that we are living, our civilization blinds us. Puts us in a humanistic realm. Amen. But when the real self start to come out. I said when the, when the real self start to come out. That inner man. That theophany comes out. The power in that self. But that self is eternal. But the banner said that eternal life. And that theophany is eternal. When it comes out. There will be no fear. Hallelujah. Even in the life of Brother Ben, we can see there was no fear. Amen. Amen? That situation there with that bull, there was no fear. He said, bull, sorry that I disturb you. Amen. I know you take a nap, an afternoon nap, but I'm on my way to pray for a sick daughter. Sorry. Amen. And that bull lay down. Amen. There was no fear. They said an animal can pick up when you have fear. Amen? Hallelujah. That's why, brothers and sisters, we've got something much more. If you think about fear, what about faith? Amen? Your body, in this body, that's why you must not listen to this body. Why the Brenham even said, you know, my greatest enemy is who? Is William Brenham. He said, is that flesh. This flesh is a hindrance. Your body is a veil. Your body is a barrier. A curtain of time that veils eternity from the one in eternity. Amen. That's why your gene does not want fellowship with the flesh. You struggle. The reason why you struggle, why you need church, is because there's a struggle inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Your gene does not want to have fellowship with the body. Because the body only want to be in the mall. Your body want to be at McDonald's. The body support the KFC colonial. The body want to eat. The body is lazy. That's why the gene don't want to fellowship with the body. Because there's nothing good in the body. There's nothing good in the flesh. And Brother Ben will explain about the white dog and the black dog. Amen. How much you give the gene. Amen. To build it out. Amen. Because the flesh cannot understand the seed. Amen. The soul gene is eternal. 
One is a dove by the bed himself, and the other one is a crow. One is a believer, and the other one is an unbeliever. The soul wants to talk to the other part of itself, amen, that didn't come, amen, by sex. Amen. That's why we can see, brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul, when he made this statement, and I love that statement that he made, the comparison that he brings. Paul said, I was a Hebrew. I was a, I said, I'm a Pharisee. I'm circumcised. I'm from the lineage of Benjamin. Amen. All that great things. Paul explained. He saw us. But listen, he's not finished. He said, but I count all that done that I might know Christ. That I might know Christ. This is more important than your lineage. Amen? Benjamin lineage represents kingship. Paul said, I'm, I, I, I said, you know, I count that all done. Paul is saying, when I read, listen, when I read of Moses, I do not have a veil on me. Amen? I see Christ, and when I see Christ, I start to behold the Father's face. I see the glory of God. It's important that you must see Christ in all these people. All these characters that God has raised up in the Old Testament, reflecting Christ. Joseph, Ezekiel, amen, Jeremiah, Isaiah, amen, Hosea, even Hosea, with that woman that was a, it was reflected in Christ. Hallelujah, brother Benham said, hallelujah, can I say this, amen? He said, this Gentile bride, me and you, we didn't know about God at first. We worship the moon, we worship the sky, we worship the, worship the galaxy, amen? But thank God for the word that have come our way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for Paul that take the message also to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Paul said, I die daily that the new man inside of me could love and reflect through me. Can that be your testimony, brothers and sisters? I die daily, Paul said. Hallelujah, that the new man inside of me could love and reflect to me. I've put off the old man. I've discovered who I am. I recognize that I am a part of the world. I have heard, Paul said, from my theophany. Amen. I know I am a redeemable attribute. Amen. And what Paul said, this is who you are. Amen. You are a redeemable attribute. His name was changed from Saul to Paul. God loved to make changes. Amen. God loved to give you a new name, Brother Yanni. Amen. He changed the name of Saul to Paul. Saul means break down and Paul means built up. Amen? I'm a changed man. Hallelujah. I'm not that old man anymore. Hallelujah. I have moved away from the old. Hallelujah. That's why we find in our modern day, when God raised up, amen, this man, William Brenham, amen, Brother Brenham came, came to a realization. He said, I'm not the son of Charles and Ella Brenham. He came to that realization. Amen? And then it comes to a recognition. And the recognition was that I am a son of God. I wonder how many can say that also. That I am a son of God. Hallelujah. Can you say to your next department, the person next to you, tell that brother next to your sister, you know me? I'm a son of God. Amen? Tell your neighbor. Say to your neighbor. I'm not the son of my parents. I have come to the recognition that I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. 
Amen. What happened to Brother Brenner? He heard from his theophany. It's not a condemnation on his family. But he come to the recognition, the realization. And he come to the recognition. Amen. That I'm a son of God. You have heard from his theophany. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of John chapter 10, verse 13, I'm going to close. Hallelujah. I don't know how much time I have. I don't know the rules here. Amen. Hallelujah. The pastor just said I must come. Amen. I was supposed to be here this morning, but because of work conditions. John chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible reads, Amen, in John chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Amen? But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Amen? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we didn't come by the window. Amen? We have come in by the door. And what makes us special is that our names are in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why, brothers and sisters, at the end we have come to the revealing of a son of man. When Brother Benham said, when God speaks of a son, he speaks of adoption. Sons, a place son, a full son, a trained son. You're not just anybody. It's God who allowed trouble in your life to mold you to mold your character. On one place, I don't know the book, but the Benham said, the, he said, uh, 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 the world is only a training center where God mold you and where God break you to form that character of him. Am I right? Hallelujah. Another quote that comes to my mind now in the message he also said, every day I analyze my life. And if it doesn't match up with the word of God, I quickly repent. I quickly. This was the life of a prophet. Amen. And he is our example. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A son that could master all circumstances. Speak in and out an existence. Little fish, I give you back your life. Yeah, at the end, we saw a sex born son. J, I've read the letters, J V H U was dwelling with a little one like himself. He was hearing from his theophany, becoming weed. While his Pentecostal friends became dry suck. But the Benham said there is a power in your gene that comes from God. Christ in you the hope of glory. What is bringing out that glory is that gene. Is that gene that brings out the glory. That's why brothers and sisters, God have ways and means, amen, to bring you to fulfillment. But there's certain things that need to die in your life. So there are certain things that need to die in your life. Boaz could not unite with Ruth until Milo dies. Who's Milo? It was the first husband of Ruth. God had to take him away. He had to die. Because Boaz was waiting. Something need to get out of the way. Amen? David could not unite with Bathsheba unless Uriah dies. Something need to die for you to come in your position. Abigail could not unite with David unless Nabal dies. Amen? You could unite Amen? With Christ. You couldn't unite with Christ unless the old man dies. That 
old man of you need to die for you to bring forth Christ. Amen? You are one of those little ones that has an angel in heaven and you have heard from your angel. We are told your angel is beholding the Father's face. The message is revealing the Son of Man to the Gentile brothers and sisters now at this time that we are living in. You must appreciate this message. Appreciate this word because time is running out for the Gentiles. You know this message is going back to Israel. Israel already is making ready to receive this message. They can feel it is in the air. Amen? But it's not bride that must be raptured. We are holding it back. Am I righteous? Amen? Hallelujah. That's why, brothers and sisters, this body, this curtain of time is a veil that veils you from the unseen world, from eternity, where the next part of you is. The real you is locked up inside of you. Amen? The real you is the, is, the, is, is the theophany. The new birth tears the veil away. The old identity, as Brother Benham said, and brings out the seed that was inside of you. As you die daily and behold more, you change from glory to glory. The unseen will become more real to you. If you die from your old stuff that you carried around, Amen. There was no need for those Hebrew people when Moses led them out to bring sandwiches in the desert. Not even water. Not even fish or whatever. God ever provided meal for them. Every day. Amen. Don't bring your old stuff over to the message. Leave it there in Pentecost. It will not work here in the message. Ons het so gebid in pangsteren. Ons het drie opgestaan, houd het in pangsteren. Amen. Don't bring your old stuff. This message have every, you must die daily from your old stuff. If you're going to die from it, then you're going to be ready to hear from your theophany. May God bless you. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to give over to Brother Harold. Amen. Bless you, Brother Harold. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. That's another bit. Amen. Let's worship the Lord at this stage. Father, we are so thankful once again tonight. Lord, what our ears have heard, we... Thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we are twofold beings, out of man of God to contact our natural world, but, Lord, there's also the inside man of God, when the Holy Ghost comes in to make contact, Lord, with the unseen, to recognize the presence of God, and, Lord, we able to, oh God, receive revelation from the hand of God. And Lord, we are so thankful, dear God, Lord, for him that has come in this day, Lord, to give us, Lord God, that faith that we need for this hour. Lord, to meet the conditions of the hour. Dear God, that you come, Lord God, to bring us, Lord, a faith, O oh God, a rapturing grace. And Father God, that the mighty God has been unveiled before us. Lord, that we cross the river veil where the glory never fails. We are living in the presence of the King. As your prophet said, O oh God, that to the outside people of God is still a word, still a letter for those who have crossed to the inner veil. Oh God, it, the word has become a reality, Father. It has become a manifestation in our hearts. Tonight we can say, Lord, that it is real to me, it is real to us, O oh Lord. Because of the hour, because of the great Holy Ghost that has come in this day, to bring to life, O oh God, every seed that laid in your great providence here at the end time. That the mighty angel of God, he comes with a shout, a voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Lord, the shout is the living bread of life, bringing forth a bride. Dear God, bringing forth that once, Lord, you had in your mind before the foundation of the world. 
Lord God, when the word of God was ministered, we came to the realization, Lord, that we are identified, we are a part of this great revelation. We are a part, Lord, we win your great thoughts, Lord, before there was a star, a molecule, or an atom. Lord, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy, Lord, you were there in your great thoughts, Lord. And we are so thankful tonight that those thoughts became a word, and the word came to the prophet. The prophet spake the word of God, and the bride, Lord, came upon the scene. It was the spoken word of God for the hour, Lord. The word made flesh today. Lord, we love you, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your wonderful name. Truly, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We can rejoice and we can be glad in it. For the stone which the builders have rejected have become the head of the corner. Father God, she is him, Lord. He was the word made flesh. He is the word made flesh, Father. The spirit of his spirit, life of his life. O oh God, word of his word, Father. She is him, O oh God. He is the word made flesh. And the bride is the word made flesh today. Lord, as Eve was taken from the bosom of Adam, likewise was the bride taken from the bosom of Christ, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We praise your name tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's sing a little song one day. I'm going to take a step into my theophany. One day.
here right now. If you believe it, raise your hands deep tonight. Peterson tonight for the, allowing the Holy Ghost to use him in such a way if there's any prayer requests tonight anybody with a need you can make it known by the raising of your hand say Lord Jesus tonight I raise my hands but you know my heart tonight Lord I realize the hour is late see things are happening around the world we realize that very 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 soon we're going to see our King we see our loved ones, it's gone on before. The Bible says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. We can ask our brother Sylvester if he would come forward tonight and close the meeting in a word of prayer and also to remember his hands. Thank the Lord for the ministry of his word tonight. Amen. pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, tonight for the word you have sent forth, Lord. Father God, you have spoken to our hearts, O oh God. Lord God, as we have had many things happening in our times, but we know, Lord, the anger was within the veil. Thank you, Lord, for the message of the hour and the prophet you have sent forth in this generation. Father God, that we can be equipped in this manner. Lord God, we thank you. We appreciate you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your servant you have used so mightily tonight. We pray, Lord, asking your blessings upon him and his family. Thank you, Lord, even for the morning service. Thank you, Lord, for such a day, Lord. Our hearts are bubbling with joy. Lord God, to know that all things 
Father God, happen for a purpose. Lord God, there is nothing, Lord, out of character. Yes. Father God, we might face challenges, we might face the battles, but through it all, Father God, we have learned to trust in God. Amen. We have learned to trust in you, O oh God. Amen. Father, we appreciate you. Amen. Father, there is raise, hands raised, Lord, before you. Thou knowest, Lord, every request, Lord. And Lord, your word says you are faithful, Father God, to answer even our prayers. Lord God, may you come, Lord, and grant each and everyone's desire, Lord. And give us strength, Lord, to run this race. Like those who went before us, Lord, Father, who left great testimonies. Lord, when we read about them, it gives us courage, it gives us strength, Father, to stand firm even in our day. We appreciate you, Lord. There is no one like you. May you be with the weak which is to come. Lord God, we ask your presence to continue abiding with us and be the after preacher, Lord. May you keep on, Lord, speaking to our hearts, giving encouragement, Lord God, as we walk in this chain of life. We love you, Father. May you be with our pastor, Lord, Pastor Beckett. Give him strength and may you keep on guiding him. Lord God, may you keep speaking to him, Lord. May you keep on, Lord, equipping him, Lord, with yourself. We love you, Father. Bless, Lord, the office bearers in this church. Give them the strength, Lord, Father, to keep raising up the hands, looking to you, Father, for guidance and leadership. Thank you, Father. May your name be glorified this evening. Bless all the ministers, Lord. Father God, speak to their hearts. Those who are even preparing for the upcoming services, we pray, Lord, that may you give them wisdom and uh, revelation of your word. Father God, we need more revelation, Father, from you. Thank you, Father. We appreciate you tonight. May your will be done, Father, in our lives. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 God bless you, brother. Amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Once again, I want to thank our brother, Pastor Peter Peterson, tonight for the ministry of the word. He's come all the way from Worcester with the believers from Worcester to be a blessing to us in Cape Town. May God receive bless you and may you have a safe journey back home again. Our next service will be on Tuesday evening. We have our Tuesday, regular Tuesday night service. God bless you and be with you until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>